How's the, the mood in the team after spending two days in the field? Uh, the mood's OK. Um, none for 20 on. Not a bad start with the bat, so uh, a little bit of work to be done with the ball, but um, I think you've got to give India credit. I thought Pajara again was superb. Uh, wore us down. Did what he, what he always seems to do. He's extremely disciplined, um, extremely tough. Um, and just he's hard to get out and then I thought that sort of set the scene for Rashad Pant to come out and show his, his skill and um, yeah I thought they drove it into us pretty well. Dave, um, David Saker said this morning uh, on radio I think that there was a bit of a um, that you and the bowlers might have been on a different page late yesterday with bowling plans and stuff like that and there was some discussion about it in the rooms afterwards. Oh yeah Sorry. we always have discussion post game but in terms of being on a different page no, we, we know all the time. I think we're pretty clear on what we're trying to do um, yesterday afternoon. And to be fair, probably the first hour of the morning and then the first hour after lunch, we got it slightly wrong. So um, it can sometimes look like that, but we know what we're trying to do. Uh, sometimes you, you don't quite execute and, um, and teams can get away from you and that's, that's what happened. Tim, just on the pitches, the first two tests were so compelling because it felt like there was a balance between bat and ball. Yep. But the last two, it feels like the team that's won the toss has had the best of the conditions. What have you made of the, of the pitches in Melbourne and Sydney and would you have liked anything different? Uh, yeah, look, I think it is what it is. It, we, it's one of those things we can't really control. We've just got to play better than what we have. So what I do know is that the pitch here and the pitch in Melbourne didn't make us bowl as badly as what probably we have in this in this test. Um, I think we've just been outplayed. Both teams have had similar conditions. Um, but yeah, from from me, who also loves watching test cricket, I'm sure the guys would like to see in Australia a bit more bounce, a bit more pace, and um, something that we've probably become accustomed to in Australia. But um, it is what it is, and we've just got to play better on whatever wicket's served up wherever we are in the world. And do you think fatigue is paid anything to the performance of the, of the fast bowls and, and line after yep. the pretty much four back-to-back -back tests? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not not so much the number of tests, but I think, as I said, the number of balls that, that this Indian batting lineup has made us bowl. They've made us bowl, I think, 170 overs in Melbourne and 160-odd again today. So that, that takes its toll, and we spoke about that right back in... In Adelaide, that's something that, that we wanted to do to their attack. We haven't quite been able to do it, and they've done it to ours. And, um, you know, at the end of a long series, you can get some real rewards if you can make teams bowl lots and lots of overs, and I think that's what you saw late today. Um, it's extremely tough ask on, on fast bowlers and, and even Lino to keep it coming in and bowling and bowling and bowling um, when you're not getting a hell of a lot of rewards. So, um, again, you've got to tip your cap to India. They've... They've worked extremely hard for three and a half tests to get get us where they got us today. Um, you sort of touched on before this test that with criticism, things never are quite as bad as they seem, and with praise, likewise. Yeah. Like, just how sort of bad do you think things are at the moment in terms of like what needs to be done to to say with the Ashes be competitive there? Um, again, I thought. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It's never that bad and it's never that good. And I think we've got to keep reminding our, our team of that so you, not, you don't ride the result so much. Um, but again, today, Richard, I, I'm pretty sure Nick won it. You know, the game might have been six for 330. And, it, and again, it's a different ball game. So they're just little things um, that can make a huge difference. And um, and with cricket, that's that's what it is. It's, it's small things that add up. And um, if we can keep doing things better for longer then we'll get better results but um, I think at the moment we've probably just been outplayed a little bit. And just how hard is it to manage that kind of emotional high and low particularly with the, the inexperienced guys in the team? I don't, no it's not it's not that hard I think you've just got to keep talking to each other and keep reminding each other of, of what we're trying to achieve and, um, and where we are um, and where we want to go so um, yeah, as I said before, we, we haven't been at our best in the last two test matches. Um, but cricket's a funny game and it can turn really quickly if you keep working hard and, and keep helping your teammates to to get to where you, you all want to go. So um, we've got to keep doing that, keep sticking together. Um, you have days and, and tests that, that don't go in your way and it's difficult and the easy thing to do is to throw in the towel. We certainly won't be doing that. We'll be fighting as hard as we can for the next three days and, um, as I said, cricket's one of those games. If you keep doing that, it, it, it can turn really quickly.
when you, I mean, when, when you got the captaincy, I mean, it was probably knew it was going to be quite tough um, to start off. I mean, did you think you'd get days like you know, seven for six hundred? Yeah, I think in Test cricket you've always got to expect it. We had a few in Dubai as well, so um, you know when you get wickets like this and um, and batters playing as well as, as some of these guys are, if you can't move the ball around, it can be really really difficult to get really good players out, and um, we're certainly finding that. So. Um, yeah, I, I expected to have extremely tough days. I had them last year when I wasn't captain. I've had them for 15 years of first-class cricket, and um, we all expect to have it. But as I said, we'll be turning up tomorrow and um, trying our guts out again to, to get back into this game. Tim, uh, you had mentioned earlier that you, know, uh, you didn't change too much about yourself when you became the captain. You, be, you tried to be the same. But when you did become captain, did you have any goals as such, uh, not just yourself but for the team as well and, and in this past say 12 months have you or 9 to 10 months have you been able to achieve those goals? Um, yeah look my my goals I said when I whose phone's that? <laughs> Tim Payne speaking <laughs> <laughs> who is it sorry? Oh okay who are you after? Casey in Hong Kong <laughs> Ah, uh, Martin. All right. Uh, he's in the middle of a press conference. Can I get him to call you back? All right. No worries. I'll tell him to check his emails. All right. Thanks, Casey. Cheers. Check your emails. Um, yeah, my, one of my goals, I think every time we're playing a test for Australia, we, we want to win. And clearly, we, we want to move up the rankings. I think that's a goal of all of ours. But... Um, one of my main, a lot of my goals were based around the way we went about it, um, what, um, and and getting the respect and, and trust back of our public and our fans. So I think we're we're slowly doing that um, from a behavioural point of view. But um, I think our performance has been a little bit off where we would like it to be. And um, as I said, to be winning Test matches and and going up the rankings, we need to improve that. Uh, been a lot of talk about the team selection. I was just wondering how much of a say are you getting into selecting the team, yeah. and are you getting the players you want? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly asked about it, um, and I give my opinion, and, and my opinion's taken in. I'm not sure how much, but um, yeah, I'm always consulted, and I'm always part of the conversation. Tim, I know you wouldn't have done. I guess her criticism today, but obviously there's been a fair bit of chat about the bowlers and, and whatnot, and you see yeah. maybe the right plans weren't put in place um, yes afternoon this morning, but do you think the majority of that criticism has been fair, at least before today? And, yeah. and um, you know, what, oh, I what think, you again, when you're playing sport at the highest level and you don't perform as well as you should, you're going to cop criticism. We all know that. We all, ex all expect that, and, and we're all used to it. Um, there's no point shying away from from it and saying that and making excuses or whatever. We know we've, we've come up short with the ball in the last two test matches. We're going to cop criticism for it. We've got to get better. That's OK. We've got to be honest about it and we need to be honest before we can get better. So, um, yeah, we've been we're aware of it. We're not hiding from it. But as I said, we'll come tomorrow and we'll come the next test match we play and we'll keep trying to get better. And I know that everyone who's bowled a ball or faced a ball in this test match is trying their absolute guts out for their country. So that's all we can ask at the moment. And um, performances will always come and go a little bit, but absolutely we need to get better. Tim, Tim, can you talk us through some of the plans that you wanted to execute against Pujara, especially, and uh, were not able to do that well against yeah. me? Better than what... Yeah, with Pujara in particular, I think if you're not swinging the ball, he's extremely hard to get out. So. Um, I think early in his innings, you, you try and hit his stumps and his pad. Um, but in the form he's in at the moment, he's not missing too many. Um, and when the wicket is like it is and you can't swing the ball, not many good players miss him. Um, and he's he's been really patient and disciplined around his off stump. So, um, as I said, he's just grinded our bowlers down, basically. Yeah, we try to bounce him a little bit. We've tried lots of different things about him. He's faced about a million balls this series, so we've tried wider the stumps, we've tried out the stumps. Nathan Lyon's been over and around. I don't think there's too many things we haven't tried, to be fair. Um, and he's been too good for us.
Tim, just uh, your captain Mitchell. Said. Having said that, I thought in Perth when we got some bounce in the wicket, we saw where we can get him out, caught behind the wicket twice. Um, that was one of the things we thought we'd probably get a bit more throughout the whole series that we probably haven't. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Uh, so you've captained Mitchell Stark in a few test matches now. Uh, he, on paper, is your enforcer, is the quickest bowler in the side. Yeah. Uh, but when the ball isn't moving much or there's not much pace of the wicket, uh, how do you look at this performance? Like, uh, does he come across as someone who wants the ball in his hand? Okay. Um, look, I think Stark is one of those bowlers. He, he, I don't know what people expect from him. I think his stats for his whole career have been outstanding. And... What he is, is when he's at his best, he is brilliant. When he's not, he's not so much. But, again, he, he's not running out trying to spray the ball everywhere. That's what I don't get with his, the criticism he's getting. Mitchell Stark is trying his absolute best to do the same thing he did a year ago when he was swinging the ball around corners. He's down on confidence a little bit. And I think sometimes people just forget that he's, he's just a bloke who's trying his best. And I know he's playing at the highest level and they expect a lot of him but it doesn't always work for him. It's test cricket, he's coming up against some very, very good batters and he's not quite at his best. Um, but we've got full confidence that with a little bit of work, a little bit of hard work and um, you know he's going to have a bit of time off I believe during the one day series so there's some time for him to go back and, and look at maybe what's going wrong with, with him at the moment. Um, and then he addresses that and we know when he's at his best he's as good as anyone in the world. He's nearing 200 test wickets at a strike rate of I don't know, someone could probably tell me. It's, it's pretty good. So um, it's not all bad. He, has he been his best in this series? No, he hasn't. Has he been for a little while? Probably not. So again, Starkey knows that and he's working on it. And he's been really honest about it. And he's trying to figure out exactly what it is that, that's missing at the moment. Uh, is it a confidence thing with him? Because with someone like Pat Cummins, you see ball in, ball yeah. out. He's, like, he has the struct in his stride. Yeah, and you turn, like you know, at the top of his mark, but with yeah. Mitchell Stark, at least from the outside, it looks like yeah. he's not like, he's not feeling it. At oh, he's not. He's an open book, Stark. You can read him a mile away. There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, he he is a huge confidence player. I think a lot of people, a lot of cricketers are um, some more than others. I think Stark is probably a little bit higher up that than some other people, and um, and we know that. So as I said, we've got to be working with him to make sure we've got him at his absolute best and he's totally comfortable and, and confident within himself because we know when he is, we know how valuable he is.